Wow. <laughs> Lidums. I think they just so will us and then in Danes afterwards. Yeah. yeah. So Nicholas, who am I? I guess we can okay. say, welcome back. Uh, how do you feel? And I mean, just from sit sitting in here, we could hear it thundering in here for support. <laughs> how are you feeling right now? I'm feeling very, very happy. Like, this is one of the biggest moments ever in my life. It's, uh, it's honestly not because I'm lazy with words, but it's difficult to describe. I'm very happy. Can you talk a little bit about the journey? back to the UFC and, and how much it means to you to be back here and for it to be in Denmark? It's, it's been a tough journey. It really has. Um, I got released from UFC. Uh, I had my last fight in UFC almost to the date three years ago, uh, today. I got released and uh, I was already slipping into depression back then. Um, so in hindsight, it was good for me because the income from UFC actually just sustained a bad lifestyle. Um, but it, it was a hard crash and, and it took me about a year of just fucking about and drinking way too many beers and eating way too many pizzas till, uh, till you know, till I had an epiphany. I was told I was going to be a dad and I had to change my life if I, wanted to, if, I, if I wanted to be the dad that I wanted to be for my daughter. And I also had ambitions for my career so I, I took a decision and from one day to the other I, I turned my life around and then crawled up from that you know deep dark hole of depression crawled back not only like personally but 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 career-wise as well I, I committed to taking a fight lost it and was so close to, to almost quitting again just leaving it but thought okay I've, I've come this far I'm not I haven't come this far to give up and my goal was to get resigned to UFC so you know I wouldn't I wouldn't gonna be resigned if I didn't like try and, and fight for it so I kept on going kept on fighting got a lot of good wins in cage wars and, and now I'm here in fucking Royal Arena in, in Copenhagen in Denmark for the first ever UFC event in Denmark and, and getting that you know support from all over the world especially the Danish fans not just you know on social media but when I was walking into the fight in the cage, I could barely hear Bruce Buffer when I got introduced. I couldn't hear my corner in the fight. That's that's crazy. If is that if that's not a fucking fairy tale, I don't know what is. And you had your family, of course, you know, with you as well this week. How much does it mean to you to have you know so much support and have your family here with you when you make your you know return to the UFC? It means everything for me. It, it it's my family that helped me get back to where I am now. Had my fiance, you know, quit on me, which she should have, actually. Like, I, I was not a nice person to be around. Had, had she quit on me, I wouldn't be here. So it's, it's, of course, a lot of people help me, but it's, it's, a lot of it is because of her. So I wouldn't be here without them. So I wouldn't want to be here without them. So you mentioned that you couldn't hear your corner during the fight. Yeah. Did that complicate things, or how did you feel about you know how the fight? <laughs> well, maybe, maybe a bit. I couldn't hear him, so I couldn't, I couldn't say, I couldn't hear what they were saying. So I can't actually, you know. But I knew, I knew the game plan pretty well, and and Oliveira did what we expected, in a good way. Um, so you know, it it didn't make the biggest of difference. Like, it's a luxury problem, not being able to hear a corner over the celebration of, of the people celebrating you, so it's okay. When it comes to injury, how serious is your leg? Because you can see that it looks serious. Oh, the, the right leg is not too bad, it's more my left knee I'm, I'm a bit worried about, but the, right. the doctor said it, it was just a sprain, right. so I think it's just from fighting and getting kicked and punched and you know, it's a bit swollen right now, so hopefully it won't be a, won't be a big thing, but yeah, let's see. It, it's it's uh, it's uh, hurting a bit right now, but. So approximately, how much time will it take to see you like again? Because probably you have a bit of hunger right while you are again in the UFC. Well, I think it's been half an hour since I fought, so <laughs> I, I, I think I need maybe a week to to be able to say how how much time I I need to right. take care of this. <laughs> but are you like hungry to? Yes, to I am. Again? Sorry, I'm just making making a bit fun. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm very hungry to back, get back in the cage. As you could hear, I, I want to fight Mike Perry uh, September 14th, if possible, in Vegas, uh, if my injury uh, allows it. Um, that could be a fun fight. 
there's uh, there's only two minutes left uh, in the fight. It's like the whole fight was just standing in the balance, and they stood you guys up. What was going in your head? Well, that moment. I was happy about that because because I felt Kappa. Anytime we we ended up in in grappling situations, he, it felt like he he didn't try to be offensive. He just tried to to hold on. Mm -hmm. um, and just the fact that he went for takedowns told me a lot about the, the pressure he felt from me. Why why did you call out Mike Perry of all people? What interests you about that fight? Well, he comes to to put on a show, and I feel I do the same. I like to fight in a, in an entertaining fashion. So does he, and uh, he should be healed up from his nose injury. So, so after getting this one, I feel that would be a big, not a big, uh, a, a, sens a sensible step up the ladder uh, on my way towards my goal, which is to get get into top ten. You spent some time out in SPG before this fight. Can you talk a little bit about that and how that's, you know, what kind of looks did you get there, and how did that help you going into this fight? Yeah, the the guys at SPG has been very helpful uh, with me. Um, the first time I connected with them was back in February when I was preparing for my uh, Cage Warriors uh, interim title fight. Um, they've been so helpful, so welcoming, so nice to me. Uh, especially John Redman from SBG. Big shout out to you. He helped me a lot for, for this fight. By yeah, we, we started calling him the Mimic because he was, he was copying Alex Oliveira as much as possible and, and took time out of his schedule to help me prepare for this fight. So to everyone at SBG and especially John, thank you. There was kind of a weird situation where you were up kicked, and which was a, a very obvious foul, but the referee didn't reset you to the position which would have been dominant for you. Yeah. How did you feel about that then, of the general refereeing in the fight? Well, in hindsight, yeah, I should have been reset in that position. Uh, but honestly, referees have a really, really tough job. Of course, they should always do their best job, but it, it didn't change the fight, so I don't want to, you know. Referees have a really tough job. I have the most respect for them. Sometimes I, I get, it can be even, you know, tougher than being a fighter. Um, so, no, you know, no, no issues there. He did, he did a good job in general. I feel. The end of the fight, you had top position. You were pounding away. Felt like the finish was really, really close. What was going through your mind? Brother? What went through my mind was that. Yeah, I really wanted to get that. I, I was trying to set up a submission, but he kept on. I don't know if he had his fingers in my glove. He, would, he actually, he definitely had a good grip on my wrist, and I couldn't really, you know, get my hand loose and 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 try and and, and make any openings. Uh, so I just went for broke and, and tried to dominate him. Um, but he's an incredible fighter. I'm happy to get that win.